Now, one thing as well, and it's interesting, John Curley, you said in the beginning, the, the rise of the internet, social media, where we're at now, I mean, I can't believe I'm even seeing articles about what's next after Instagram. I thought Instagram's still the big thing, but we got TikTok. It's all TikTok. It's TikTok, man. It's crazy, but marketing is changing so much. I always ask this question on the podcast, and it's something I think about a lot as well with my podcast. It's something like this, right? You said you hung up flyers. When I started DJing in college, too, like... You text people, you put it on Facebook. No, I was hanging up flyers and posting them on walls and in college bars and whatever it might be. Still started doing that in Chicago. I would go around in my day job, hand little flyers to people as they're talking on the phone and say, hey, come to my event, come to my, come to my event. So in a day of so much social media where everything seems really oversaturated, what do you guys do to market, whether it be grassroots or even utilizing social media to its advantages? And we'll start with Clay. I mean, for, ours, for our events, we're lucky we have, you know, hospitality groups or hotels with pretty sizable marketing teams behind them or we actually like put line items for like pretty big spends on social media so you know if we want to put two thousand dollars toward instagram to promote promote an event or you know thousand dollars at facebook or hire a small street team and whether that's the interns that are running around flyering something up it's great but i mean i think the the biggest strength we found is it's it's personal invites it's calling your friends it's mm -hmm. sending out those personal emails it's you know for us, like liquor vendors and things like that that we've worked with, it's like, hey, we're throwing this party. Like, I know you're not a sponsor, but we'd love to work with you on another one. Come by. Like, here's, like, you know, our, our table for you to be present at. Or here's, like, some free tickets for you and your friends. So it's it's the personal stuff versus, like, the over overreaching with, like, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever. I mean, you can go down that rabbit hole and hope that it works, and it might. But I think for, you know, it's – I think everyone's kind of going back to, like, the, hey, like – Come to my event, man. Would Make me feel bad. <laughs> yeah. It's like that Bernie Sanders meme going around. You guys seeing that? I'm asking you to come to Verified once again. <laughs> I relate to that so much. John Cote, what do you think about that question, sir? How do you handle marketing? You know what? Honestly, like, I don't really post it. Like, usually I, I won't post something until after the event's over because I can't accommodate everyone. So I kind of just like... mic drop. So I, I kind of do it the opposite way where it's like... You know, if I want them to be there, I'll send them all my RSVP here for the next six months because everyone is busy, mm -hmm. everyone has lives, and then but I feel like they w they need to be part of something, so I'll send my invite to say save the date. I won't even tell people where it is, and then if they flake one time, I just don't invite them back. It's really like it's one of those, <laughs> you know, like I mean it's because it's like because you kind of like create the space to like you know so people I'm have holding to you to that by people the way. have to no I'm, I'm i'm good for my word right i mean and like i mean i you know it's like so i kind of do it the opposite where it's like if it's a public event and there's like a big place that can accommodate people i will tell people hey you know what this is open to everyone but usually my events i kind of keep it like i keep it moving so no one knows where it is and no one can pinpoint where it is only maybe like a few people that's really part of the event knows where it is so i won't announce it and then until after it's over then i post it up and just say hey this was the party what do so, you do with your relationship from starting akira because a lot of your parties have like models and lots of reputable brands do you reach out to them directly do they come to you just through a party recently yeah. you know these guys had millions of followers they were djing do they promote for you is that how you kind of leverage no i mean it's just like it's all like personal relationships. I mean, it's really, you know, it's just, um, I, I mean, I'm happy to have not paid anyone to come to my event. You know, it's like, that's like an influencer, whatever you want to call them. Like, it's literally like, it's just out of respect. Like, Hey, we're going to do a good party. I want you to be part of it. Or like, or like people will send me messages from wherever. It's like, Hey, I'm coming into town. What's good. And then from there, we'll, we'll create a party. So a lot of times, like, it's either planned or unplanned. And then, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a matter of, like, it's just... I mean, I know a lot of people's schedule that I can't even... So a lot of times, like, when people say, hey, I'm coming to town, I'm like, is that announced, unannounced? Is that, is that for, for work or are you just here for fun? You know, it's just like, I mean, those are the questions you want to ask. Because a lot of times, sometimes people just need to get away from L.A. or I need to get away from New York and they just want normalcy. So it's not about them being some sort of influencer or celebrity. They just want, they just want to go grab coffee and not feel like they're being bothered every minute. Mm -hmm. So they just, so Chicago is a great place for that. Good middle ground. I love that. 
What do you think, Mr. Curling? How do you guys handle marketing? So I, I'll break this up into two parts. First of all, it took me a while to realize that one of the things that I really love doing and one of the things that I, I flourished at was actually brand building. Going way back to, you know, I mean, the, the late, great Wavefront, uh, you know, oh, building, no, like, no. Re, resuscitating brands, you know, like, you know, from Spy Bar to even back to the Crowbar days and, and moving forward, Paradigm Presents. And then what I've done, been doing lately, and that it goes back to kind of what both of you said, was that, you know, if you're only good as your last party and people know you for basically the experience, it's the experience that they want, right? So if you're building experiences for people and you're able to tie it to a certain brand, that means a lot. Um, I've built a lot of event series. Uh, for instance, the Seasons one that you mentioned earlier. Um, and I take these brands that have been built over time because they uh, involve you know, a pinch of that and a little bit of this. These are the kind of music. This is the kind of visuals you're going to get. These are the kind of people you'll expect. These are the kind of venues you're going to see it at, right? And now a release the event with no lineup whatsoever and start to sell tickets because it means something to people. It only means something to people if they can connect it with a certain experience. It's gotta be, there's got to be some kind of visceral component to it for it to really work. Um, so I spend a whole lot of time in building brands and things that actually you know, mean something to people. And the only way to do that is to like tailor. It's painstaking, but I find it actually, you know, very effective. So in that, that's one part of it. The, the other side of the coin for me is this, is when it comes to marketing and the budget that you spend, it's all about data. And you need the data, you need to understand how to use it and you utilize it and work it you know, to your favor. And especially when you're talking about booking artists. So in, in this, world that you know that I live in any given artist DJ whatever um, has his own following uh, you can geo target people that like that same guy you know you could do all kinds of stuff now between Facebook and Instagram and you know TikTok isn't quite there yet but you know all of the big social media platforms are fertile grounds for marketing if you just know how to utilize it right so we spend quite a bit of money on finding a way to reach the people that actually care about what it is that you're selling.